this series of videos, we're going to talk about how you take your application once you've developed it and migrate it basically from a test system to a production system, or maybe from test system to QA and then to production. And so what we're going to use is the MSI facilities built into the BizTalk admin console. We're going to go to our purchase order application, which is right here. And the first thing we'll do is kind of an oversimplified version. We'll just come here and right click and we'll say generate MSI. MSI file. And it's going to bring up this little wizard. You answer all the questions. There's no options here first. So you see I'm pretty much just walking through the wizard taking the defaults. When you get to this screen you see the application name is automatically populated here so normally you would not want to change that and notice where it's going to actually put your files this is where I would probably create another directory on my disk where I want to put my files so here I'm going to create a directory called deploy I don't know why it's not I don't know why that was giving me trouble but now I've got a directory here called deploy and I can either browse to it or I can just pop it in right here so notice it's the directory name then by default it's going to put your application name dot MSI right here and then we're going to click export and it's basically building the MSI file right now that was real time so it took about four or five seconds and here are the instructions to actually how to use it later. So by the way, applications can depend upon other applications. And there's always an application here called biztalk.system. So all it's telling you is before you migrate this from to production, you got to make sure that you have a an application called biztalk.system on your production system. And of course you will because that one's already installed when you install biztalk. It says then the two steps you must do, run the exported MSI file on the server on the target environment and then import the MSI file. So it's always a two-step process. One is to install on Windows basically and the other is to install into the BizTalk database. So when you import the MSI in the admin in the same way we exported it, that's what updates the database. It also creates here a log of your uh, the run of the MSI. It's not very exciting but anyway you can browse that on your disk and you can see what it did. It will tell you all the all the resources that were basically added for you. And then you're done. So that was actually a little bit oversimplified. So before we continue, let's just actually look at the file that got built. So here's your directory and here is your purchase order application. And notice it looks like it did see the policy here. Nothing in the test directory. So now let's come back over here so here's the first thing you really want to do is you want to export your binding files and I'll show you why so here for instance we might say export bindings and then I'm gonna put the same directory I just used and it's called purchase order app.bindinginfo.xml now you can actually export a binding file for just one particular assembly, but we're going to do all the assemblies in the whole application. Sorry about that phone, the video must go on. So we're going to export all the binding files for our current application. If we click OK, it's already done. We go back to our directory and we look for the binding file that we just created and here it is. Now I'm going to open this with uh, an I guess uh, an editor called Edit Plus here. So I might want to make some changes to this. So first of all, if you've never seen a binding file, let's just talk about this for a few minutes. Um, it's all XML. Uh, you can open it in a browser. Of course, it would uh, show you the, uh, the indent indentations properly. Uh, you can see here basically everything that's in your application. So here you have a, a bunch of modules and here's a module reference and the name of the module or application is purchase order app okay then you have your schemas that are inside there so here's a property schema and it gives you the assembly names of each of these items 
Here's a schema called trace. Here's a schema called purchase order w3.org. So basically these are references to everything we've created, schemas, maps, orchestrations, and so on. If I scroll on down, let's try to get to more binding information. So one of the first things I want to look for is C colon. Okay, that's a very common thing when you have an input or an output directory on your computer. Oftentimes, at first, you're going to put C colon here. Now, when you go to production, maybe you're going to be working on a SAN, for instance, a storage area network drive, and instead of putting C colon, uh, the BizTalk server where you're running on, you might be wanting to write this to the SAN. So the first trick would be, if possible, try to use the same directory structure on the SAN that you do on your own machine when you're testing. The other thing you can also do to maybe make it easier, even on your own machine, is like if my machine is called Neil Walters, I might do something like this. And instead of putting C, C dollar or C colon, I'll create a share called something like BizTalk Demos. Okay? And that way, then when you switch from test to production, you have fewer changes to make in your binding files. So that's one of the things you can think about ahead of time. Okay, so for now, I'm just going to undo that. So I'm going to leave this file, actually I'm going to save it as, and I'm going to put here uh, test underscore. And now I'm going to save it again, but, well I'm going to change it here, but actually after I save it. So I'm going to put the word prod and save it to disk. And now every time I see this, I'm going to do a replace all here. So I'm going to do search and replace, and I'm going to put uh, prod machine slash um, prod share slash biztalk demos. So you can see I've changed that everywhere in this whole file now. And there might be other changes you may have to make when you go to a production machine. For instance, maybe your number of retries. Uh, let's just find the word retry here. So like there's a retry count three times interval every one minute. Maybe on production you might want to have a different retry count or a different retry interval. Uh, I'm just trying to think of things you might want to change when you go to production. Those are probably a couple of the main items. So I'm going to save this. And now what I want to do is actually add these binding files to the MSI as resources. So we'll actually come back and do that in the next video. This video we basically did just an oversimplified MSI export. And then we exported the binding files and made a couple of changes to them. And in the next video, we will include those binding files as resources here in our, in our application.